He is the NABO welterweight champion, and he's just landed in the U.S. on his way to the biggest fight of his career this Saturday night. He'll be the main event on ESPN as he takes on the mean machine, Kavaliauskas. Uh, Mikhail Zuski, man, welcome back to the Great Fight North Boxing Podcast, buddy. My pleasure, guys. My pleasure, of course. Thank you for, uh, for talking to us from the airport uh, on American soil. Uh, talk to us a little bit, first of all, about what it was like um, getting out of Canada, getting into the U.S. Was it weird? Not really. I mean, I've been doing this for a while, coming to Vegas for my fights into to the United States. So it was just like, just as usual, but I haven't been here in a while. But, uh, you know, of course, with a mask on in the airport right now, I'm just staying away from everybody, hopefully. Nobody pulls up to me screaming about putting my mask on, <laughs> but it's a mask everywhere and a plane. And it's a little weird, but you just, just get used to it. Just deal with it. I like the, I like the branded mask though, man. It's looking good. But uh, <laughs> look, let's talk about the big news, which is you finally got the big fight that you have been waiting for. Last time you were on the show, we talked about that too. You're at the stage of your career where it's all about that big fight now. Um, with a win, on Saturday night, what does that do for your career, man? Oh, it does. It does everything that I need right now. It puts me, you know, uh, it gives me, it gives me a lot of credit, a lot of credit uh, to be considered as a legitimate uh, welterweight contender. If I win in a good in a good manner, there's no one that can say that I don't belong or in a ring with a champion or I can't call anybody out. You know, I feel like if I win, if I knock him out, I stop him, or I win, you know, a, a, a white decision. Uh, I will be allowed and legitimate to call Crawford out or any of the champions. That's what I think it does. Amazing, man. Amazing. So right now we're recording this. It is Wednesday morning. Um, you are in Chicago, right? Exactly. We had a four hours uh, stop here in Chicago. <laughs> There's not so many flights right now yeah. uh, from Montreal to Vegas. So we had to deal with that, but it's okay. Just taking my time here and, uh, and, uh, breathing and staying calm and it's going to be a long days of traveling but it's going to be okay so once you do arrive in las vegas uh between here and the fight how do you anticipate it going like have you already pretty much hit your weight do you think it's going to be strange to try and um continue your training within that bubble how do you think it's going to go now for the rest of this week I think it's going to be uh, just the same as usual. When you go, when you go you know, into a fight, you stay in your room. You don't do much. So I feel like uh, I think when we land in Vegas, we can stop to a grocery store to just grab some things that we need to eat, like for uh, weight loss or whatever, fruits and vegetables, and then get to the room. And uh, you get tested right away. And when you, your test is negative, then you're into the bubble and you can't leave it. So uh, it's just going to be whenever I, whenever I fight, I just, I just go out to eat and that's what we're going to do. They're going to bring us to the convention center in, uh, in the MGM, whereas only fighters and camp are allowed to go. So we're, we're not going to go to restaurants with public or anything. We're not allowed to have any interaction with the public. So it's just going to be in that, those two rooms that they, they have for us to eat and go back to the room and just chill. That's what we do anyway. So it's not a big a big thing for me but uh the weight loss the weight loss is good i'm, I'm uh you know obviously i gotta i gotta dehydrate like every fight just lose uh, a few pounds over there and uh but other than that for, you know I'm, i'm pretty on point right now i'm where i where i need to be so your last fight um i believe you injured your thumb in the last fight right exactly i broke my right thumb in a third round in a fight that went you know ultimately you stopped him in the 10th round yeah Yeah, so then you had to pull out of the fight in March and then the pandemic came. But would you say maybe like the pandemic was kind of like a blessing in disguise in terms of recovering from the injury? Yes, and I was just a couple, like I was hesitant. It was like, you know, are we really going into a fight without being 100%? Like it wasn't like a big, like it wasn't like if my thumb was hanging or anything. It was just like, It cracked a little bit. I could feel pain. I couldn't spar properly. I couldn't throw it like 100%. And it was like, at this point, being in the rankings, is it worth to just go into a fight, you know, with that kind of injury? And uh, I think if the fight would have been like two weeks out uh, later, I would have taken the fight and it would have been okay. Uh, the blessing is that while well, everybody stopped, you know, the rankings didn't move, didn't move me. They didn't move me down or up, for a matter of fact. But I mean, it's not like you can get a lap 
or passed by anyone. It's just like everybody stops, but I wouldn't say it's a blessing in any matter because I had to take time off training and I don't like that. I don't have to, I don't like to, the fact that I could not go to the gym if I wanted to. I'm, I'm a guy that trains all the, all the time, even though if I'm not going to have a fight, I just train, you know, lightly, but I, I work on things and I couldn't do that. So that was, that was a little painful, but we worked through it. So with the boxing situation in Quebec, I believe you weren't like allowed to do sparring until last week. Let's not talk about that. Oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> I mean, I mean, really, like, yeah. are you are you not going to spar for a fight that big? I mean, let's not just okay. not talk about that. Really, I'm not gonna go into a fight without prop, you know proper training. So, uh, you know, according to the law, I wasn't allowed to, but just not talk about it. Oh yeah, okay. So we'll we'll delete that. <laughs> so, like, what? How good was your training camp? You know, in the pandemic. It was, it was pretty, I mean, uh, Yvonne Michel told me as soon as ESPN started the fights with Tarper, he said, you know, just try to stay, you know, within, he said, how many weeks do you need? I said, we were in the complete pandemic shutdown. I was training in my garage. I said, right now I need eight weeks, but in two, in two weeks, I will tell you six weeks. I'm starting now. So I'll try to stay six weeks within six weeks of a fight. And then as time went on, I was just training and training and feeling so good. I said, Yvonne, I need four weeks. And we had offers for like three, two weeks. And I was like, I need to make weight. That's the only problem. Other than that, I would have taken the fight. So we said, okay, we take the fight, but give, give us just two more weeks. And then uh, uh, Carl Moretti texted me uh, from Tarp Rank uh, privately on Twitter. He said, uh, you, you would have six weeks. Could you be ready? What, what about your thumb? And I said, my thumb is good right now. Let's go. And he didn't say no opponent. and was like, who are you thinking? And he said, Kevin Lewis gets I was like, oh, my God, perfect. Let's go. That is awesome, man. And really, you know, I'm sure you've watched a lot of Mean Machine in the past. He looked really nice in his last fight. Uh, how do you evaluate him as a fighter? And, uh, you know, what are some of the flaws that, uh, that you see in his game? Obviously, you're not going to give away all your secrets for the game plan. But, but what do you think of Kavaliuskas as a fighter? I think he's a very good, I mean, he's been to the Olympic twice. Uh, he's a very skilled fighter. He's super fast, super explosive. And he has that power that you cannot count out. I mean, he's, he's, he's a powerful, powerful guy. guy. Uh, he's very technical too, but he's a little stiff. Uh, you know, he's a little stiff. He likes to throw hard all the time. He's a little stiff and he doesn't like it when, you know, he likes a, he likes a slow paced fight. He likes to take his time to be able to look at, and I'm like that a little bit too. I'll, I'll be honest with you, but I feel like we worked on things in the camp where I can step it up, step it up a little bit, but uh, you know, he's, he's been to the Olympic twice. He's been, he's been a, a good, he had like 300 amateur fights. But the thing is he stepped, when he, whenever he stepped up, like against the top guys, he got beat down. He got beat down against Crawford. That's only it's the only chance that he got a you know a good, like a great great fighter. But in the amateurs, he also got stopped in the in the world championships in 29 when I when I, when I beat the Cuban. He was there too, mm. and uh, he, at the he was in the lower weight class I believe. But he got stopped by Frankie Gomez, uh, the American, and uh, I mean he got stopped three knockdowns, sending eight counts, and uh, I think like his chin is is a, is an issue for sure. And I feel like uh, I might not be Adonis Stevenson. I might not be the biggest puncher, but I feel like I definitely have the power to hurt him. Yeah, so your last fight, I think probably the best performance of your career. I mean, it was after four straight decisions, and then you got a knockout in the last round against a very tough opponent. So do you feel like after all these years kind of climbing back from the Ponomara fight that you've gone to like a, a new level in terms of your skill set? I wouldn't say the skill set. I don't, I don't think I was less skilled before, whatever. I just think that it's uh, to realize that, you know, before Ponomarev, I thought that I, I was going to stop everyone and hurt everyone. I thought my power was something else. And at some point, you're just going to fight a guy that's going to stand there. He's not going to care about how powerful you are. And every, every, every fighter with power, they, they get a guy like that. That's, they're just going to stand there. And I had to realize uh, how to win rounds, how to stay calm and break a guy down is what I, that's what I did in my last fight. I just took all his tools one by one. And he was so desperate when he got hit, he would just went down. Like it was, it was over. There's no way I knew it. Like the way I, I kind of laughed when he fell, I just knew like 
it was just the final punch that I knew that I had to place at that time because he didn't have any any tools left to try anything else to try. So I broke him down, and that's what I think I can do against Cavaluskas too. Because I think he has that that flaw too that he thinks that he's gonna hurt everyone. That's what he does. He hurts people and they they quit mentally, and then he stops him. And Crawford did not do that. So. In terms of like fighting with no fans, I mean, you have like over 150 amateur fights you fought on undercards where there's almost no fans. So it shouldn't be a problem, right? I don't think, I think it could be an advantage because I'm coming from Canada. I'm the guy coming on the B side. I'm flying in. I'm coming over there. Uh, you know, I would be the guy that the crowd would probably put at the disadvantage. And uh, it's just going to be like a, you know, just a sparring session in the gym, just an intense one, whereas uh, two guys are just trying to knock each other out. But other than that, I don't feel like it's going to be, it's going to feel different for sure, but you cannot like let that touch you in any, any matter. You just do your thing. It's a, it's a big fight. I have to deliver and uh, I will, I'm sure I will. So big fight coming up in just a few days, man. You told everyone you want to give Quebec fans something to cheer for. Um, what does this fight, if you win here, what does it do in your eyes for Quebec boxing right now? Well, I feel it gives us, uh, right now we don't have any, we don't know where it's going. We don't have any direction. You know, Alvarez just lost. Uh, Stevenson, what happened is out of the picture. There, there's good talents that are out there. I'm not going to, I'm not going to deny that there's very, very good fighters coming out of Quebec right now. But, uh, you know, there's not so many higher level guys are who are fighting at a championship level and i feel like i could i could potentially be that guy hopefully i can uh, be that guy that carries the sport for a little while and give the opportunity to the younger ones to to build a record under under my main events hopefully i can be that guy but i feel like people need something to to, to someone to cheer and uh, someone to to just be behind and i feel like maybe this win uh could make people believe believe in me that you know i'm the thing and i can really compete at the championship level we can use a big win man no doubt uh Mikhail, man this is so much fun for me uh you know i've known you since before your pro your pro debut uh i'll be watching saturday night along with everybody else here in canada and on the in the u.s too uh we wish you a ton of luck man this week as you lead up to the big event and thank you again for for joining us here on the great fight north boxing podcast on, during your layover on your way man my, my pleasure, man. Always cool to chat with you guys. I think we're having a little bit of a connection issue here, but uh, thanks to you guys so much. Thank you.